Hey guys, it's quote unquote your boy, Ballface8020. Back again with another great response video. Uh, you guys really aren't gonna like this one. Um, um, uh, in this one, you know, uh, you, you guys know if you've watched my previous videos that I'm a creationist. And I've never really spoken too much about it before because I don't know. There's a lot of reasons, you know. I'm not really, like I said, I'm not really interested in changing anybody's mind. I don't care, you know, what other people think about it, and it's not a subject. It's a subject I may have interest in listening to and reading about, but I don't really have an interest to talk about. Uh, but there is an exception, and that's when, like, some for something like this, this video gives a good example of just the intuitive problems that I have with with evolution, and that I think a lot of people do. And, uh, this guy, Paul Agia, he is a, I really like his videos, um, tends to be, like, he, he does, initially he did anti-Young Earth creation stuff, and then he switched into doing anti-resurrection stuff. I've watched some of his anti-Young Earth creation, but not very, very little, relatively speaking. And, uh, but I've watched a good amount of his anti-resurrection stuff. and um. You know, so me, obviously, I'm Jewish, I'm not Christian. Um, I usually agree with him on, um, on like what he says, like when he's debating Christian apologists about the resurrection. And I've talked about this before. It's because the, uh, it's not because necessarily because he's such a great debater or anything. Um, it's just that the Christian apologists set up just an impossible standard for themselves where they, you know, the, it, Christian apologists go up and say, we can use 2000 year old documents to prove that a supernatural event is the most likely explanation for events. And, you know, like, which is, I mean, it's, nobody could do that. It's impossible. So, I mean, of course, of course the atheist is going to win those debates. And, um, the, uh, so, um, but he, I think he, you know, he does a really good job. Like his responses to it can be very, very entertaining, very funny. And, you know, this is like what I said before, you know, about, I mean, nobody criticizes white liberals more than me, but this guy, you can really tell, he really just like, when I talk about white liberals who have hearts of gold, this is like an, ex an example I would show. If you weren't going to just use people in my family, this is an example of, just a really nice, genuine guy. He's, he's so intellectually honest and he always, you know, he, he's always complete class, even when he's talking to people who, who aren't so classy with him. So he's a guy I really respect and admire. Although we obviously, we don't agree on a lot of stuff. Um, but, um, but anyway, so in this one, he is going to make, this is, this video isn't so much, his video is not so much a defense of evolution per se. It's responding to this guy, this Christian apologist, Mike Winger. And he's trying to give like, I guess what he's, you kind of have to see it to know what, you'll see what I know what I'm talking about. But it really, this video kind of demonstrates the, like I said before, the intuitive problem I have with evolution. And I think a lot of other people too. And, um, it gives a real good, chance for us to do a non-scientific um, response of our objections to evolutionist arguments. Um, now, because if it was, I've watched debates um, with uh, creationists versus evolutionists, and I, I cannot follow them at all. I, I just can't understand that because I can't understand the science stuff. I, I hate science. I think it's the boringest thing in the world. I just, I, I despise it. And of all the types of science, I think biology is the most boring, which is saying a lot because all science is boring. And, um, the, uh, so yeah, I can't follow those, um, follow those debates. So like, I would rather just talk about it on the intuitive philosophical level, which is what this video does. So sorry about the long preamble. Let's get into the response. So I am responding to Paul's response to Mike Winger. Mike Winger is a internet Christian apologist. It seems like an okay guy, but he's basically a moron. So we will respond now. Untrue. Okay. So this is a short video that he's done talking about evolution. Is evolution contrary to God? And Mike has noted. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely it is. Just that a lot of people disbelieve God because of evolution now. I mean, yeah, it definitely, it, 
it definitely can be a gateway drug. And the reason it's a gateway drug is because to truly, and this is going to be my thesis that I'm going to come back to over and over. If you truly believe in evolution, you don't believe in God. Um, they, they like to, you know, get around that and say, no, no, yeah, yes, you, you can. No, you cannot. If you truly believe in evolution, the real, and, and, so if you believe in God and believe in evolution, I mean, I don't think you're lying, but you're, you're deluded or mistaken because it either means you don't really believe in God or you more likely is you don't really understand evolution. If you really understand evolution, it, it means God doesn't exist. Okay. And again, I know how they would wiggle out of it. I know how he's going to wiggle out of it. If, if I talk to him, he would say, no, it's not that God doesn't exist. It's just that it doesn't, it's not that it proves that God doesn't exist. It's just that it's a natural process that is indistinguishable from what you would see if God doesn't exist, which is in practice the exact same thing. I famously made a video. My very first video on this channel was Ken Ham made me an atheist. Now that's kind of a joke because it's a it's a bit of an oversimplification of what happened, obviously, but it's it's nice for a rhetoric. I didn't when I came to accept that evolution was real, was a scientific fact, and also that the theory of evolution the scientific theory of biological evolution had incredible explanatory power. Both of those things are correct. I didn't abandon my Christianity because of that. Well, okay. Okay. And that was a mistake. You should have, because if you really, or, or you didn't really believe in evolution, you know? Um, so, I mean, so you're, it's kind of both things. So first of all, you're admitting it was the gateway drug. And um, second, you're saying that, um, Sorry about this. I got like a sneeze that I can't decide if it wants to come out or not. But second, what you're saying doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense because if you really had had time, I mean, what probably happened is if you're, if you're going to be honest is you didn't really think about it. You thought like, oh, you know, they both be true. And without, and if you had really been, again, honest with yourself and thought it through, you would realize, well, it's got to be one or the other. You know, that there's no place, <laughs> you know, for evolution and Christianity or evolution and any kind of theism for that matter. Specifically, it just set me on a journey of trying to figure out what in the Bible I could trust or what I couldn't trust. I don't think that Mike has phrased this correctly, that people, as soon as they come to accept evolution, that they immediately reject God. Obviously, there's theistic evolutionists all over the place. A lot of... Um... Okay, well, first of all, what he said about theistic, theistic evolutionists, that that's what, that's what the evolutionists always say. They always try to do this. Say like, oh, no, 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 you can believe in evolution and still believe in God. And going back to it, no, you can't. No, you can't. Not, or not if it's, if, again, no. <laughs> it's not real, it's not really evolution then. If you believe in evol, if you really believe in evolution and really believe in God, you don't, what you, you don't believe in evolution. You believe in some form of intelligent design. Now, you may not have the balls to come out and say that because you know that you're going to be shouted down. Um, but that's secretly what you're going to think. And that's what I think pretty much every, every theistic evolutionist is really an intelligent design proponent. They just don't want to come out and say it. Um, what was the second thing he said? That it's going to make people disbelieve in God? Well, I guess by itself, not necessarily, you know, because like I said, what, what, what people do is just compartmentalize in their secret, you know, their secret, I, you know, intelligent design proponents. But, um, you know, even to themselves, they don't admit it. But um, they, uh, and for the record, I'm not an intelligent design proponent. I'm a, creation, I'm a creationist. Um they, um, but I mean, it is, it is important to be, to know, like what I said about it being the gateway drug. I mean, to like, if you see, you know, committed atheists and there's like 99.99% of atheists are just, you know, it's not a big deal to them. They, I mean, they don't believe because they don't believe in that's that, but I'm here, I'm talking about the people who like take atheism, like treat atheism, like it's their religion, like the, the like the most important thing to them in their religion is evolution. They like are really passionate about it, and you know, I mean, and then when you had you know, um, you know, in this in today, I mean, like you know, you'll see like anything with anything associated with atheism, and it's been like this for a long time. They tend to make a huge deal about evolution. It's something they really care about. So it's definitely there's definitely a correlation there. 
Christians believe in evolution, so those, those don't go hand in hand. They're not real Christians, or they don't really believe in evolution. Uh, I don't think they're causal, but what evolution, of course, does allow is it is a very natural way of looking at things and figuring out that the things that we used to think that we needed God to explain, we no longer need God to explain. Evolution is one of those things. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not against uh, scientific inquiry. I mean, I don't want to hear about it because it's boring, but the, uh, the, uh, that's a good thing. You know, if you can, if you can find, you know, God did it is generally not an acceptable explanation. And, um, the, uh, it's not, it's not good for people. You know, the, um, it's not, you know, it's, you're going to have a higher standard of living if, you know, you do, you know, explore stuff and don't, don't just stop it. You know, God did it, uh, for, you know, for everything that you can, can't explain right away. And so, yeah, that's, um, I mean, I, I guess he's, I don't, I don't really, like I said, I don't know a lot about the science behind evolution, but I'm, yeah, I'm sure that's, I'm sure that's true. The biological diversity of life, whether you think God controlled evolution or not, it's a process that doesn't require God as best as we can tell. So, right. So in, like, this is what I was saying earlier, practically it's the same thing. It basically, so there, there's two, uh, there's, you can be a theistic evolutionist as long as you say, well, it could, it, it, uh, it looks like it happened without God playing a role at any stage. That's what you have to say to be a theistic evolutionist. If you don't say that, you're not really an evolutionist. You're, you're some form of intelligent design proponent. Yeah, it's, evolution is problematic. I'm with you, Mike. And for the record, Mike actually doesn't accept evolution, but his argument today is that even if the thing he doesn't think is true is true, that's evidence for God. Because, of course... Yeah, yeah, Mike's Mike's an idiot, but and the what he's saying here is actually, you know what? I I do kind of know what what Mike is saying here. I it, it's not an argument I would have made. Basically, Mike, who I'm assuming is some kind of old Earth creationist, well, you know what? We'll let Mike speak for himself. Mike, when you're a worldview, pretty guy. Let me give you a simple example. Here's my cell phone. Imagine my cell phone happened from me, an explosion. Maybe we can prove it. Okay. As soon as you hear someone who doesn't accept evolution talk about an explosion that is a red flag that they don't understand evolution i didn't understand it um i i think that's i think that's probably true and um you know i i would say that you know again from when you're talking about like the nuts and bolts the word i'll use here is minutia i don't know if that's the correct word um, of evolution, I, I'll admit that I really don't understand it. I, you know, I have a hard, a hard time following it, and I'm not even willing to attempt to educate myself because I hate biology so much. Um, the uh, I know what I learned in school about it. I know what I learned in school about it. I I know what I learned from, like now something like you know Darwin's The Origin of Species that I can follow because it's just words. You know, there's not you know it's not like um, but like once you get into like the genetic stuff, I'm like completely lost. And, um, so, I'm sorry, what was he talking about again? He was saying something about, oh, the explosion thing. Um, yeah, I, I would agree that, <laughs> that, that if you see somebody use that word, it's prob probably a red flag, yeah. Um, I mean, but, I mean, that they, yeah, I mean, I, I think what he says, says there is fair. Evolution when I was a Christian. And, yeah, and the notion of that anything related to explosion can somehow correlate to, to evolution as an illustration is entirely ridiculous. At this point, we can know and understand that Mike Winger doesn't understand that which he rejects. We can prove that the cell phone happened from an explosion. All the particles of glass, they kind of came together and the heat was just right that it sort of came into this flat, perfectly solid form. Wouldn't we not, therefore, be logically reasonable by saying, boy, somebody brilliant must have planned that explosion. Okay, so Mike thinks this is a great analogy. It's it's a pretty good one. An explosion happened. The glass heated and coalesced and, and formed into his cell phone, and there and therefore you would. We're gonna set aside for a minute that, that that's nothing like what evolution would describe. No, you're you're wrong. You're you're wrong. It's it's a lot like evolution would describe. What, because basically, what what Mike is saying, the only difference is that Mike's example is inorganic, and your example, the first cell, is organic. So Mike's saying that there's like an explosion or whatever in his words, and it somehow comes out and forms, you know, this working 
cell phone. And, you know, and, you know, your example is going to say there's not an explosion. Okay, I'm sorry, we won't use an explosion. It didn't all happen at once. But slowly over millions, billions, I don't even know how many years, a bunch of inorganic particles are going to merge together and become a living cell, which is not just more complex than a cell phone, but possibly infinitely more complex because we can create a cell phone. We can't create a single cell out of in inorganic materials. So the same thing is happening. I guess may maybe, maybe Mike's example would be more, um, more, uh, more like more of a parallel if what Mike had said was, instead of saying an explosion, he had said something, imagine after billions of years, things had just rocks had merged together, they had turned to metal, they had turned to different kinds of metals and stuff like that, there was fire that like, you know, that soldered some of the stuff together and different things, and then you had winds blowing in, and eventually you ended up over the course of millions of years, all these things churning out a cell phone that would be more like you know whatever because that's what you're saying except the difference is instead of a cell phone you're saying a bunch of inorganic chemicals came together and formed a single cell now i want to say something very important here i 100 percent concede and i not because i feel the exact same way that you know seeing this happen with an organic material like an organic thing like a cell is is infinitely more intuitive than, than for a cell phone. Because, like, obviously anybody can think about it and just dismiss the cell phone. That a cell phone could just randomly come into existence from its random events. We obviously, everybody can just intuitively dismiss that. And that's not, that's certainly not how I feel about a single cell. I, I absolutely feel like the single cell is is totally plausible that the the evolutionist create the evolutionist argument that inorganic materials over the course again millions billions I don't even know how many years come together and form this living cell I, I agree that that it's intuitively it's totally plausible um, however if we're just going by like what's happening you know it's the same there's definitely parallels they're both examples of I don't know if you want us to call them machines, except one's organic and one's not, of machines just coming into existence. And, you know, we know that machines don't just come into existence. People design and build them. So that would be the theistic rejection of this idea that a living cell would just come into existence, which is something that people haven't figured out how to build yet. And maybe we never will. Drive. Mike then wants to say, well, wouldn't the designer of that explosion would be amazing. Yes, it would. Now, I mean, to actually even set the explosion aside, let's say that the year is 1700, and the smartest human on the earth in 1700 walked out of his log cabin and had a modern iPhone, Samsung Galaxy something, had a modern phone. That also wouldn't explain things, because, again, that, that would be someone godlike, but he would have invented something useless. The phone, which we know was intelligent design, happened step by step, right? We had the very first telephones, uh, Alexander Graham Bell and others who, you know, who created the first telephone style communication. There was the invention of batteries. There was the invention of harnessing radio waves. There were invention of antennas. There was invention of, first of all, just glass well-prepared glass and then eventually touch screens and screens like all these things happen separately iteratively with intelligent design happening to eventually lead us to the point where the smartest people on earth could take all of those parts and imagine them together to create a phone now where am i going with this thank you that's exactly <laughs> where are you going with this help us out here well mike wants to try and say that if God was behind evolution, that it's, it's similar to an explosion that created this final result. Yes, exactly. Although I, I would say that if then in that case, it's not really evolution; it's intelligent design. But yes, okay. Even if you want to give God credit for evolution, that is not the process that God has done here. The, it's not that God, Adam showed up on the first day. If God created evolution, if God created evolution, if God was guiding it, He still guided the spectrum that was chemistry through to biology, the first 
molecules, the first proteins, the first RNA, the first DNA, that all still happened slowly. God built on that. Now God may have set up the... Yes, and if God guided, started, he doesn't even have to guide. If God simply set that in motion, it's no longer evolution. And you know it's no longer evolution. You know that that's intelligent design. Conditions of the universe that would allow that to happen and maximize that to happen, and then once molecules are replicating, eventually forming cells, eventually forming replication with variation, eventually getting to even sexual reproduction, all these things. But God didn't design an explosion for this to happen. God would have designed a process that was... Well, who, who fucking cares? about whether there was an explosion or not. So, okay, fine. So take a, get rid of Mike's stupid explosion example. Let's just say the cell phone from natural processes, like, you know, like wind, rain, volcanoes, earthquakes, you know, you know, rocks fusing together, metals popping out of the ground, asteroid things, just those over the course of millions of years formed the cell phone. That's what happened, you know, inorganic, that's what formed the cell phone, not just one explosion out of another, because that would be more akin to evolution, I guess. So you're, you're really, it's, you're just bringing up the, the, it's so irrelevant, the explosion example. Like, who, who fucking cares about the explosion? So let's say it's like that. Then that would be a better example. So, you know, so I don't, I don't even understand what you're, why you're making a big deal about this. Who can, so so the cell phone thing is slow and natural too. Who fucking cares? What's the difference? No, see that's that's what I'm trying to say. With the cell phone, even though it happens slowly through natural means, it is still distinguishable from a natural process because we know that there's no way in hell that a cell phone <laughs> that just random events could have created a working cell phone. That's what Mike is trying to say. That's what everybody's trying to say. And that's what I'm saying. So you, this is like I think the um, one of the main hurdles that evolutionists have with convincing, you know, people who don't buy it. And um, you could have them, like I said, believe all the other scientific stuff. Like, yeah, it all started from a single cell, which started from inorganic materials. Yes, it all started 13 billion years ago. Yes, it happened with this and this is, and we could all agree on this. But what you'll never get is a genuine theist to not see that it was, you know, designed, that, that there was design going on. Okay, that's what every, they might not admit it, but that's what they're going to think. This is the thing, Mike. We don't see marks of, boom, there was an explosion, and cells were on the scene, or humans were on the scene, or any of that kind of stuff. Like, this is just, it's not going to convince your theistic evolutionist friends either. I don't have any theistic evolutionist friends. You know, the thing is, I don't want to convince, I don't want to convince anybody, and I definitely don't want to convince any theistic evolutionists. The theistic evolutionists, to me, are, are way worse than atheists. That doesn't mean it was an accident. It means it was just even more brilliant. Because not only did they cause it to happen, but they caused it to happen through one act of creation. But I, I don't think it's accurate, but I would absolutely use it as evidence for God. No. All right. So, Mike admits, he doesn't think doesn't think it's accurate. You no, know, I would I would actually agree. Uh, I, I think it would would um I'm sorry I would disagree with what Mike said there. I I would not use it as evidence for God because I don't think it's intuitive. I like I think that to me that again I think that logically there is a problem. And I, as I've, I've you know I hope I've made it you know I've at least made clear what I think even if what you think is bullshit. Why it's Logically, it's problematic to say that, you know, these, you know, inorganic materials can just naturally, without any guidance, come together and form a living cell, something that we can't even do with guidance. Um, because, but even though that, I, even though logically I can't see how that could happen, intuitively, like in my head, I can't see how that can happen, but in my heart, I do. In my heart, it makes total sense to me. So I would not use it as an argument. To say that to 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 be proof of proof of God, I've, I would not. He clearly doesn't even understand it, but he's going to claim it as evidence. He understands the basic of basics of the initial of the where your position starts, which is that the that these 
uh, machines that are more complex than anything we have, that anything we can make ourselves formed randomly. Um, which, and, and that's something that we don't see anywhere. We don't have any other examples of machines <laughs> forming randomly. And the difference is that this is an organic machine, not an inorganic machine. So fair enough. But he's, that's what he's saying. He's saying that like, okay, well, it's still a machine. And just like, so what Mike is saying is just like inorganic machines don't randomly form from natural processes. Um, and if they did, somehow through an explosion was Mike's example, then that would just be that we would just know that it, it wasn't random, that somebody, some genius designed that explosion for that to happen. Um, just like we know that, well, then we were, we're, we're going to apply that same logic to organic machines. And it's fine if you don't buy it because I don't really buy it. I don't really buy it. Again, like I said, logically I buy it. Um, intuitively, I do not. So, but I mean, don't say that he doesn't understand what your your position because he does. You don't understand his. It's for God, because if it did happen somehow in the weird way that he imagines it would happen, it's evidence for God. I don't disagree. I actually think it would be more impressive for God to create through evolution than through just. No, I I disagree. That that's what intelligent design proponents like to say. So as like their cop out. It's no, I just, I completely, I mean, look, I mean, whatever, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, you know, if, if God, assuming that God really did create everything, I, I don't think he needs, he doesn't need my approval, but, um, no, I, I disagree that that's more impressive. I know I strongly disagree with it. Uh, how would that be more impressive? I would see it as way less impressive. Story that we're told in Genesis chapters one and two, where he creates you know, all the kind individually, because it is kind of smarter to set up a system that allows for the diversity, much like, you know, in its own way, if you if you write software to do a very specific task, say you have Photoshop or you have Google Chrome or you've got very specific software for different tasks, that's amazing and that's great. That means they were very talented engineers that made that happen. But if we're now we're we're on this cusp now where we're actually putting together software with large language models and that where we don't actually know where it's going to go. We're, we're now, we're kind of setting up the parameters for which it can, it can go on its own and evolve in its own way. You know, is that more or less intelligent than the person who designed the software? I think that could... Well, no, I mean, what, what you're saying doesn't make any sense because, I mean, I mean, if you wanted, that would only make sense if you were, if your base assumption was you were, th was theistic but a non-infinite, a non-infinite God. So yes, if there was a non-infinite God, yes, what you're saying would make more sense. That if like he built into it a way that it could kind of direct itself without him, um, then yeah, okay, I agree. That would be um, that that would be. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be more impressive because again, if he was infinite, not only would he not need to do it, but logically it would be impossible for him to do it because there would be no, if he's infinite, it would be impossible for anything to happen outside of his will. So I'm, I, I know what you're trying to say, but I, I just don't think it works. Be a debate, which is more or less intelligent. But anyway, all this to say, Mike doesn't understand evolution, but he wants to claim it for God. He, he understands, he understands what, it, what it's all about. You know, he's on, he understands where it begins and where it's going. And that's all he needs to understand. You know, because he's not trying to be a biologist or anything. So, you know, why do those of us, you know, who aren't interested in science, you know, need to know anything about evolution? We don't, because it's fucking boring. You know, and I go, you know, for all for all biology stuff. And um, but no, he absolutely understands the he understands the philosophy of evolution, the basic philosophy that all the science is built on, and that's all he or anybody else needs to understand about it. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next.